Hello everyone, today we embark on a fascinating journey through the Andean mountains, a journey that will lead us to explore one of the most ancient and historically rich languages of South America, Quechua or Quichua if you prefer. I'm Constantino de Miguel and I warmly welcome you to a new episode on our channel, Prime Group. Ajinjachu, greetings, also known as Runa Simi or the language of the people, Quichua is a lingua franca that traverses cultures and traditions throughout the Andes mountain range. Quichua has withstood the passage of time and is still alive, spoken by about 10 million people in Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Argentina and Chile. Quichua was the main language of the Inca Empire, which was one of the largest and most powerful empires in America before the arrival of the Europeans. With the Spanish colonization, Quichua began to decline, although it should be noted that it was the Spanish missionaries who, with the purpose of evangelizing the natives, began to transcribe Quichua using the Latin alphabet. These early efforts at transcription and codification were very important for the survival of the language as they allowed for the creation of written texts in Quichua, including grammars, dictionaries, and religious texts. One of the oldest surviving texts in Quichua is the Doctrina Cristiana y Catecismo para Instrucción de los Indios, published in 1584 which includes a description of Quichua grammar and a Quichua Spanish dictionary. Yes, Quichua grammar was codified and published 25 years before English grammar. Did you know that? During the administration of Viceroy Francisco de Toledo in 1579, the creation of a chair of the general language of the Indians, as it was called, was ordered at the Royal and Pontifical University of Lima, today the National University of San Marcos. The first professor of Quichua was Dr. Juan de Balboa. The Viceroy decreed that students could not obtain a degree without having studied Quichua, as it was very important for administration and evangelization. This measure was enacted after the installation of the first printing press in Peru. For the Viceroy, the only effective way at that time to teach them doctrine was to preserve the runasimi imposed by the Incas. And to meet that demand, he asked King Philip II for the creation of Quichua chairs at the University of Lima, an authorization to print a catechism in that language. The revolt of Tucap Amaru in the 18th century put an end to this policy of maintaining Quichua, and the authorities of the vice royalty and later the Republican governments of Ecuador and Peru promoted Spanish, which is the language that even in the Andean communities has been prevailing since the 20th century over Quichua. Now let's talk about the peculiarities of this Indian language. Unlike Spanish or English, Quichua is based on an agglutinative grammatical system, which means that it uses suffixes and prefixes to change the meaning of words. This can make words very long and convoluted. Example, wasi, which means house, wasi, we added a y, it would be my house, wasi hay kuna, so we add the suffix kuna and it would be my houses. Wasi kuna pak, we added another suffix pak and it would be for my houses. It also has a system of three grammatical persons, first, second and third, but does not distinguish between genders. They are accented on the penultimate syllable. For example, nina, which is fire, wawa, baby, and yaku, which is water. By the way, there are quite a few words that English has borrowed from Quichua through Spanish. Here are some examples. Lama, in Spanish is llama, but lama in English, this word comes 
from the Quichua word llama, referring to the domesticated South American camelid. Quinoa. Quinoa comes from the Quichua word quinoa. Quinoa is a highly nutritious grain that was a staple food in the Inca Empire. Condor. Condor comes from the Quichua word kuntur. It's a type of uh, vulture and one of the largest flying birds. Puma. Puma is taken from the Quichua word puma, which refers to the large cat, also known as a cougar or mountain lion. Guano. Guano comes from the Quichua word guanu, which means dung. The term is often used to refer to bird or bat feces used as fertilizer. Jerky. This word comes from the Quichua word charqui, which means dried, salted meat. Coca. Coca comes from the Quichua word cuca. The coca plant is native to South America and its leaves have been used for their stimulant effects for thousands of years. Inca, the name of the historical South American empire, comes from the Quichua word Inca, meaning ruler or lord. It is important to know that there is great diversity within Quichua with many different dialects. Some of these variants are mutually intelligible, while others are so different that speakers of different variants may have difficulty understanding each other. In terms of its writing, although the Incas had a system based on knotted cords called quipus, modern Quichua writing is based on the Latin alphabet with some adaptations to represent specific Quichua sounds. The future of Quichua, like many indigenous languages, is uncertain but not necessarily gloomy. Although the number of Quichua speakers has decreased over time due to factors such as urbanization, globalization and cultural assimilation policies, there has been a resurgence of interest in the Quichua language and culture in recent years. These efforts include bilingual education programs, the use of Quichua in the media, as well as promotion of literature and music in Quichua. In Peru, for example, the government has implemented Quichua Spanish bilingual education programs in many areas with a high Quichua speaking population. In the digital age, Quichua is also gaining presence. There are language learning applications, online dictionaries, and social networking sites available in Quichua. In addition, at the international level, the recognition of the rights of indigenous peoples and their languages has helped to highlight the importance of preserving languages like Quichua. UNESCO, for example, has recognized Quichua as an intangible cultural heritage, which has encouraged efforts for its preservation. And so we reach the end of another episode on our channel, Prime Group. Remember, if you like the content, don't forget to subscribe and activate notifications to keep up with our videos. I'm Constantino de Miguel, and before saying to Pananchiskama, or see you soon in Quichua, I want to thank you for your time and attention. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.